instructor for over 20 years, Lee Hammond teaches realistic drawing and painting workshops at her studio in the Kansas City area, as well as across the United States. Since 1994, Lee has authored more than 30 instructional books, videos, and downloads for Northlight Books, and she has been a regular contributor to publications such as The Artist's Magazine. In addition to her writing and teaching, she is a certified police composite artist and licensed NASCAR illustrator. You can find out more about Lee and her breadth of work at leehammond.com. In this video workshop, Lee demonstrates techniques for achieving lifelike drawings no matter what your subject, giving you the tools you need for wonderful, realistic results. Now this, to me, looks very, I don't know, outlined, very cartoony. And remember, anything that's got an outline that's drawn all the way around it is going to look cartoony. So our goal with this is to learn how to capture those edges so they look like edges and not outlines. Now, like everything else, you want to start with the darks. The paper's already white, so you can't really create them. They're already there. So the only way to make something light show up is if you have dark next to it. So we're going to study this and look where all the darks are. You can see where things are overlapping on this finished piece. Everywhere there's an overlap, there's a shadow. So that's where we're going to start. On this example, you can see where I started to place in the tones. I started kind of in the center, getting the darkness of that center put in so I could kind of use that as my jumping off point, if you will. Now, it's real important as you go around and you start putting in your darks that you start eliminating that look of outline. If you see right here, I'm going to start by taking that outline and then coming out with the graphite, fading as I go. Remember the value scales? It's all the same thing. So I'm going to fade out, and I'm going to diminish that look of an outline with the shading. Now, anytime you draw a line, ask yourself, where does the darkness of that line belong? Which surface? Because that line means you've got two surfaces. They're not connected. They're separate. So the darkness of that line belongs to either that surface or this surface. Once you figure out where the darkness belongs and you shade out into that surface, the line disappears and you then create a light edge. See how on this one, where it's finished, how I have the darkness? Now the light edge of the petal below shows up. So now I can come down here and start shading this petal. And by doing that, I'm actually creating two light edges, the edge of the petal itself and the light edge of the petal right next to it. And again, all the outlining disappears. A gentle blend then makes it look dimensional. So, what you do is you go one petal at a time. You can't draw everything at once, you gotta kinda pick your petal and go from there. So let's move up to this one that's a little bit bigger, a little easier for you to see. You can see that I'm coming behind this light one. On the photo reference, you can see it. And I'm going to put the darkness behind that light petal and create a shadow in here. Now remember, go slow, because you want your blending to look nice. You don't want it to look scribbled and rough. These petals are very, very smooth, and your pencil lines always represent your surface. So you don't want this to look textured like the hair on the dog that we did before. You want this to look smooth and continual like a flower petal. Now I'm going to blend out. And I'm going to create the curve of the petal as well. Now because there's so many overlapping surfaces, there's so many edges here, Every petal here is like a little mini drawing, and you have to treat each one like it's special, because it is. 
your drawing's only as good as your weakest part. So you don't want one petal to be really good and the other one to be half done. People will notice. It won't look very good. So treat each petal like it's a drawing all of itself. Now, you'll notice on the other drawings we did, we didn't have a background. This one, because it's a light flower, I really wanted it to stand out. I wanted that lightness to be illuminated. So I'm going to show you how to create a background that's kind of out of focus, obviously not what's in the photo at all, but it'll help enhance your edges and make this flower look light. I eliminated a lot of the stuff over here, and I changed it up over here to create more balance. I wanted it to be a little bit more decorative looking, so I added this leaf down here where it wasn't in the photograph, and I added some extra little things on the outside edge, like this little leaf coming out from behind, just to help redistribute the weight and make it look symmetrical. Now to create the background, I want to come in, and I'll just start up here for you. I'm going to come up behind these light petals to get rid of that outline look, and I'm going to start shading into the background. Then I can shade out from there and just take it up as I go. Now it looks like the flower has a light edge instead of an outline drawn around it. Now this is kind of where these big stumps come in handy too because I'm going to be working a bigger area now. So I can take one of these and this one's already grubby. I've been using it for a while. It's got a lot of graphite on it. So I can actually use it to create some of this background. And see how I'm going in a circular motion? That's going to help that out of focus look. Kind of like what, a, what you see when you look at a, a photographer's background. It has that swirly look. And that makes the flower look even more in focus. So to finish the flower, all you'd have to do is go one petal at a time and go around the flower, creating all the light edges all the way around until it looks like this. So don't be afraid of being creative. You can enhance it a little bit too. You can see there's certain areas on mine that are a little bit darker than in the photo and vice versa. There's other areas I've taken the kneadable eraser and I've really picked up some bright highlights. Remember, light looks more authentic when it's lifted, so don't leave it out. Always blend it a little bit and then pull it. See how the texture of this petal looks realistic? I couldn't have done that if I just left it white. So don't be afraid to experiment with your eraser. The worst that can happen is you have to re-blend it and do it again. But most of all, just have fun with it. And you can create something as beautiful as this.